Hey guys, this is Manoj and welcome to Recraft Relic channel. I hope you all are doing really well. And uh, yeah, so I'm back with a new video. In this video today, we will be going through how we can write unit tests for our API, which are built in Express and with MongoDB. And we'll also go through how we can create a CRUD API in Express. So I already have a project set up. Uh, I am going to show you how to create this API in a project which I'm, uh, I'm already working on. It's a personal project, uh, but you'll get the idea. So I already have like a get user API. So today we will be going to create a delete user API uh, basically. For this project, I'm using Docker. So I'll basically start up the project. Uh, to start the project, I have to do Docker Compose up. Don't worry if you don't understand Docker right now. Uh, there is a video that I will be uh, creating. Uh, so you can also use Docker with your uh, Node.js projects. But for right now, it's OK if you don't know what Docker is basically. So I have started my project here. And uh, let me also. Uh, see one thing okay so we have the project running here um, so let's just get into the code okay so you can see we have uh, this folder structure here and uh, inside this folder structure I have a routes folder inside which I'm creating the user API basically so I already have this uh, create user API here user uh, router dot post and uh, then I'm exporting this uh, and using it inside my index.js. Um, here you can see uh, user router and then I'm using it to the slash user API. Okay, uh, with that being said, let's just uh, jump into the code. Because we will be writing test cases in this um, application, so it's always a best way to write test cases first before writing any uh, code. If you don't know what uh, test cases are or specifically what unit test cases are, uh, let me explain uh, what unit test cases are and what uh, are their benefit if you're using them. So basically uh, test case looks something like this, um, like this. And what uh, a test case do is uh, it basically uh, code which will um, test your application code uh, and see if it is behaving in a right way or uh, in the be in the way that you want it to behave so if uh, something is many missing or if your code is not uh, working uh, the way you want it to be uh, the cases got failed and you can fix them so let's just get started uh, before uh, writing the test case uh, in the code we have to brainstorm what our, our test cases will be so for example what will be the condition where we want to put a checks or what kind of code we want to test so what kind of functionality that we want to test uh, if i will be specific okay so the first thing uh, uh, okay start with defining our requirements or what kind of api we are writing and what is the purpose of uh, this api so let's start by this so this api is a delete user api um, okay and it's probably going to delete a user so it needs some kind of unique identifier to identify which user to delete so the input will be a unique identifier or you can say a user id basically which uh, user you want to delete from the database and in case if uh, we don't pass a valid api a valid user id um, valid user id or we don't uh, pass user id at all um, then uh, it should throw error some kind of error so the first test case that comes to my mind is if we don't provide a valid id if no valid id then we should get an error so what is an invalid id basically what uh, kind of definition what is the definition of invalid id so there can be two type of invalid id the first one is we don't provide any id so no id basically uh, no user id or 
corrupted user ID or you can say wrong user ID, a uh, user ID which doesn't exist on our database. Doesn't exist in our database basically. So let's simplify it more and uh, convert. Let's convert these uh, this uh, test case into two test cases. So the first test case that we are going to be write, writing is if there is no ID provided, then we should return an error message which says we that you have to provide a user a user ID and uh, our text second use uh, test case will be if there is a ID provided and that ID is not a valid ID uh, then we will we will send we will send an error which says please provide a valid user id and the third case is very simple so in third case case we will be uh, testing if everything is okay if there is a valid id then api should return a message saying uh, which says that user is deleted success fully this case is decided we are ready to write some test cases code okay so I'll just basically going to comment this code delete this let's just uh, keep these requirement okay so for writing test case on the uh, test cases on this project I am using mocha and chai basically uh, these are two uh, assertion library or test cases library you can use to uh, test case here code and also we are using a request package to make the api request so we can test our api so let's just uh, start it start this okay so we have chai here uh, okay so let's just import it we just need expect from it so we'll just use that require chai dot expect so we just need the expect right now and we're also going to be getting the request here require request and our testing url so I already saved this testing URL in uh, a constant file I have. So here it is. Um, so this is basically the testing URL localhost. We are running the our API on port 300, and I created a URL of it, and then I imported it here. So once that being done, we are ready to write uh, some of our test cases. We start by writing a describe scope. So describe scope. Uh, let you describe what a test case is basically for and uh, this will help us when we will run our test cases uh, now let's uh, describe our test case so this is a delete user api so i'm just going to write delete and user api and inside this uh, we can write our code basically We have to pass a function like this and we are good to go so you can see we already created some test cases for the create user api but uh, we are going to be writing new uh, test cases for the delete user okay so this uh, we described a scope uh, now we can describe multiple nested scopes so in delete user api what we want to test so we have three test cases basically so i'm going to describe another uh, test case here which says uh, uh, no 
user no user id provided validation error so we want to check if uh, we don't provide any user id to our api and if they if the api returns an error for that or not okay so we'll go like this and uh, then we have to pass in the function so we can test it and now we are going to use it this is also an another keyword provided by mocha so we have to pass a title to it so when we are testing if our api is returning us error or not we will be testing two things first thing is the status code basically what status code the api is returning is it 400 404 or 200 status code and we also will be testing the content the error message that api will be sending so i am going to write firstly the status test code so the state code test code is something like this we have to provide a callback um, uh, in which we will test our API and if our API test is fine then it will show a green flag when we'll run it on in the command lines so to test our API we have to do something like this so we will going to create a request to the testing URL um, okay so let's just add our testing URL here testing url slash user uh, slash delete slash um, or to be more specific we can do something like this uh, we have to provide a user id here and then delete by doing this we are compiling compiling more to the the crud basics basically so we have a user then we have a user id and then we have slash delete to delete that user and we can define this user here um, const user id equals to one right now and with that being said uh, this will be a delete uh, type of the method so there are multiple methods get post delete patch but uh, because we are deleting our user we are i will be using the delete method for this so now let's uh, resolve our uh, response so for resolving our response we will just uh, do this so this is uh, the first argument we don't need the first argument and then in the second uh, argument we'll get a response basically so let's just go here and console.log this response All right okay so i'll just going to comment this uh, user test cases because we create user test cases because we don't need them uh, we just need this uh, you know the delete user test so let's just uh, start them by running npm test and let's see if our test fails or not so here you can see this is the console that we have put uh, so it's consoling the response right now so we do we just uh, uh, what to test the response so we can just do response dot status code here and we'll see what status code we get so we do the npm test and you can see it is giving a 400 form yeah that is right because we don't have the api right now so it is giving us a 400 form that is completely correct so when uh, we don't provide a user id so we don't have to provide a user id so let's make this user id empty so we don't want to provide a user id uh, and we, we want our api to send an error so because it will be a syntax error because we are not providing the 
the input that our API needs. So our API will send us a status code of 400 basically. So right now we will going to use expect. So expect uh, we already impl imported it here. So we are going to something like this. Expect uh, the status uh, the response dot status code dot two dot equal 400 okay so basically we are ask uh, asking our uh, test case that expect that uh, the response uh, the response status code uh, which we'll get from the api should be equal to 400 and if it is correct we'll call the done callback basically which uh, basically going to execute next test cases okay now, now let's uh, try our test case so we go here we type npm test and you can see our test is failing because we get the actual uh, the actual response that we are getting is 404 but the test case expect that it should be 400 uh, that is correct because we don't have the api right now so let's uh, start by creating our API so we can pass this test case okay so here in the routes uh, I already have this uh, create user API let's create a delete user API below this so user router dot uh, delete and we'll basically uh, this is uh, the index so we'll have like something like this so user id slash delete and then uh, well because i'm using a sync await here so i'll uh, have to create this a sync request response and then we have this okay so firstly foremost we have to test uh, if we are getting the user id in the request dot uh, params basically so let's extract user id from the params and if it is not provided i'm just going to assume that it is empty so from the rick dot params and let's console this and uh, and I'm going to just uh, send uh, a status of uh, 404 uh, just for right now you know just for the testing purposes and uh, in the JSON I'm just going to pass a message not found yeah okay so i'm going to console the user id here on the second thought uh, let's just uh, change this to 200 and uh, message to like success or something so okay so we have uh, so we created a utility api uh, we get the user id and uh, we treat it as a param uh, then we have slash delete in front of it then we are extracting the user id from the parameters and then we are consoling this okay so let's just try this out uh, let's do the npm test okay and uh, yeah so i discovered a error basically so it is still showing 400 phone uh, for but uh, clearly we are sending like a 200 but it is clearly showing 400 phone the reason for this is so if i go to into the, my test case i am uh, sending the user id empty and because the user id is empty the url that uh, we are getting is this uh, okay so just uh, let me console this console.log and if i console this and uh, run the npm test you can see the the url uh, which is creating and it is treating this as user slash delete so in order to this uh, test to 
work we have to provide like a space id so the url uh, which we'll create is something like this npm test like this and then uh, our uh, you can see like we are getting a 200 right now because our api is getting hit now previously because we are not providing like a space in the user id uh, or it was completely empty so because of that uh, this uh, uh, this route was not uh, getting recognized and uh, it was not working so because we have a space now now we can also see like a console here like the empty user id console here so now we can put a check and uh, if we found that the user id is empty then we'll just return an error okay so how are we going to do it basically uh, so i'm going to put a f user id dot trim so it's just going to trim uh, the spaces from uh, from the both handed ends and then and then uh, i'm going to put a not here so if uh, there is a user id uh, we trim the spaces from both ends and then we check if it still um, is an uh, valid string if it is not then we just going to return response dot status uh, because we need a 400 status so we are going to send a 400 status uh, dot json and uh, in the message i'm just going to send error and uh, if it works then we're just going to return 200 so now uh, we are getting the user id and if the user id is not there or the user id is empty even after trimming the spaces then uh, i'm just going to return uh, the status of 400 and in the json basically i'm just going to send a message which says error okay so let's see let's try to run our test and see how that works and you can say it's passing it's passing because uh, um, uh we are passing like an empty user id and uh, because of the uh, that uh, user id is empty we are getting this 400 so okay so if we want to make this work we can also put, put like user id one here and then our test case will fail yeah because it expected to be 400 but now we are getting 200 so okay. so this test case is working so our api is a f is full proof right now so our first requirement is done uh, in our first uh, requirement we say if there is no id provided then we should return an error message and uh, which says that you have to provide a user id so status code is working so we are getting a status code of 400 if we are not providing a user id but now we want also want to test the uh, the content basically the error message that we are getting so let's define another test case which says content and inside the content we are going to pass a callback which is get done and inside that uh, let's take an empty user id or let me do one thing you know just uh, define it outside so it can be used both in both uh, test cases so i'm going to use the same api hit everything but now instead of checking the status code i'm going to check the the error basically uh, the same way i'm doing it in uh, here you can see response to body dot error okay so let's just copy this and put it here okay so response dot body dot errors um zeroth error that we will get will be equal to you have to provide a id an id okay a user id okay. so we want uh, that we so if the user id is empty then we also get a status code of 400 and our uh, error message will be equal to you have to provide a user id let's uh, run the npm test and let's see if it works 
uh, the three uh, the this test is passing the status one but uh, the other test is failing so let's uh, also try to make it work okay now so let's go to our route and uh, let's change this to errors and convert this into an array and say you have to provide a user id okay so now what we are doing we are sending a status of 400 and in the json in the body as we are checking here in the body uh, dot errors in the body dot errors first element we are providing user have to provide a user id um, you can see user have to provide the user id the reason i am taking this errors into an array is that there can be multiple errors and uh, in the future if you want to pass multiple errors we can also do that okay so now let's try to run this and see if the test works okay so can I read property zero undefined it says uh, let me check so I'm blocking so response to JSON it sounds error okay. um, I'm writing the status code as a 400 let me see response start body okay we also have to do one more thing so because we are sending JSON from here we also have to pass it here to actually see uh, actually decode the value so i'm just going to pass this response dot body into body this const body json dot pass and response dot body inside this and now i can test for the error so we basically pass the response dot body uh, into the body and uh, now we are checking checking that body dot errors first errors should be equal to you have to provide a user id and let's see if it's working um okay expected undefined to equal you have to provide a user id it says it is undefined let me check Ah, uh, okay. Uh, right. Okay. Yeah, I think I haven't saved this file. Uh, yeah, it's uh, working. Sorry. Let me remove this. Okay. So just to be clear, let me go through this thing one more time. So. Our requirement was if there is no user ID then we should return an error message which says uh, you have to provide a user ID and uh, so what we are doing uh, from the back end if uh, we don't have the user ID we are sending two things for first is the status code which we are sending to 400 and then there is this error message which is you have to provide a user ID so we are sending this two from the back end and we return a test case which basically tested so we try to send a, a, a empty user id and then we test if the backend is sending this correct status code uh, which is 400 and the correct error message which is you have to provide a user id and it's working perfectly fine so when we do npm test uh, we get the status and content got passed so both of our test is passing so now it's time to uh, look into our second requirement okay let's uh, start by copy pasting this uh, okay so our second requirement if is if there is a id provided and that id is not a valid id then we will send an error which says please provide a valid user id okay so let's let me change this so if user doesn't doesn't exist okay uh, rather than i'll just type uh, if invalid user id provided validation error invalid user provided validation error okay 
so let me provide like a user id 1 and the status code will be 400 that's okay so yeah so i think this will be same uh, because we will going to be providing an invalid id it can be any id so right now one doesn't exist in the database so it will be an invalid id its status done uh, so we'll call the delete api once again and uh, we'll send the status was equal to 400 if the user id doesn't exist i think the only thing uh, in the both test cases which will going to be changed is this uh, the error message so instead of you have to provide a user id it will be please provide a valid user id okay so uh, let try to run this in pimping test and uh, the two tests are passing uh, the previous test was uh, both of the new tests are failing so that is uh, because if there is a user id we are not checking it into database or anything we just returning a 200 uh, which is not what we wanted we wanted 400 if uh, we are passing like a invalid id uh, and also we want to check the error message but we are not sending an error message right now so that is also something that we have to do so now we have to basically find uh, if uh, the user exists in our database or not so let's uh, do let's do that okay so now i'm going to do a wait so let me do it in a try catch basically so uh, i'm just going to do this const uh, record equal to i think i have some user model here uh, already i already created a user model if you want to see it it's here so inside the model folder i have like this user schema and i'm i have cre already created a model of which i can use to search create or delete uh, any user and i exported it and then i imported it here and then i'm using it here so i'm just uh, going to find the user by id user dot uh, find by id and then i'm going to uh, provide the id which is user id here and uh, this because we are using a single wait so uh, rather than using that then i'm just going to await and see if i got any record what happened so I'm just doing this and if there is an error it will go to catch inside catch I can just do this console dot error okay uh, let's see how this works okay it says user is not defined uh, yeah because it is not it's user model Now we are once again going to hit the API and you can see this cast to object ID field for value one at the path ID for model user okay because this is not an object ID okay so how are we going to solve this is this uh, kind of problems are very simple so the problem uh, that we are facing is uh, because this uh, ID is not a valid object ID uh, the user ID which uh, mongoose uses so it's throwing error that uh, it can't be converted into a object id so to uh, and this is a really good case so for example if uh, some user is providing like a invalid user id for example like this like one and everything we have uh, we don't want our uh, server to crash basically so we can also look for this kind of error for this kind of looking for this kind of error we, are, we have to check for the error dot name so when uh, the our code fail i can uh, we can check for the error dot name so let's run this and when we run this so we get the 
cast error inside the error.name if I console the whole error you can see the whole error object also so inside you can see the message the name uh, and uh, everything uh, but uh, we uh, this name is unique always uh, to the error so we can use this uh, so we can say if error dot name is equals to cast error then we can return the response as 400 and we can say provide a valid user id i because it makes sense right um because uh, the user id provided by us was like this integer like a single integer and it can't be casted into a valid mongo db user id we are returning that uh, this uh, id ca id is not a valid user id and we are sending the status as 400 and also sending the error message let's see uh, let's run our test and see if it works Okay, so you can see three is passing. Three uh, tester passing means the status code test is passing, but uh, the uh, the error message test is not passing because we are like sending a different uh, error message. So let me fix that. Uh, please provide a valid user ID. Let me copy this and uh, paste this okay so now if we try to run all of our tests got passed so let me summarize it uh, once again so for example um, we hit this API with uh, user ID 1 and what happens is what happens here is so I try to run uh, the we try to find the user in the database but uh, because the it is not a valid user id we got into an error we check if it is a cast error and if it is a cast error that means it's not a valid user id so we are sending an error message this is one case but there is also another case that the id can be valid so it can be a valid format but uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that it should exist in our database let me give you an example uh, okay so I have this uh, valid format mongodb id um, but it's it doesn't exist in our database so I'll just put it here and let's see what happens and if I do an npm test you can see two tests are passing two tests are failing because the reason for our test to fail our last two tests to fail is because uh, the id that we provided was a valid format id so this catch never run and uh, instead of that this 200 uh, status code is getting returned so we also have to check if the format of the id is valid but we also have to check if it does it exist in our database or not so we already found the record so we can put like a very simple check here if record so if there is no record if not record then we can just do um so we can do something like this written uh, response dot status 400 json please provide a valid user id um that is correct so what we are doing we are trying to find a user by id and because that user doesn't exist in our database so the record is null and if the record is null we are just sending the response to status to 400 and then we are also showing that uh, please provide a valid user id okay and also uh, let's just put this here in the else so 
if the record id doesn't exist then we'll just uh, going to send a 400 instead uh, and uh, if it exists we'll just going to send a 200 and just for now and let's run this and you can just see all the tests are passing uh, just again uh, once again to summarize so what we are doing we are sending a valid uh, mongodb format id and so we get that uh, user id and we find uh, according to that user id we are finding a user if uh, that user exists or not if it not if it does not exist then we are sending like an error uh, 400 error and uh, asking uh, the user to provide a valid id valid id and if it exists then we're just sending the 200 in so i think uh, that is it for the second uh, test case the tech second test case is passing that is working fine uh, now just uh, remain with this uh, last case so let's just uh, create that okay so our last case is if there is a valid id uh, then api should return a message which says that user id did it successful so let's uh, create our uh, last test so i'm going to copy and paste this so it will be the same but uh, now we will be also testing this um, message inside uh, one api the reason for that is uh, because we can't delete one user multiple time so if we do like two requests for example one for the status and one for the content then we are deleting the two apis deleting the two users um, and we can't do that uh, because uh, once this api basically hit uh, the user uh, the user will get deleted from the database and for the second time our api will fail that being said uh, let's also change the name for this so we can do like status and content because we are checking the status and content together in this okay uh, and then we have the testing url user user id delete that is good that is good okay so let's change this because we want uh, this to be 200 here and uh, let's uh, also parse the body json dot parse response dot body here and do body dot message have to equal to user deleted successfully okay so what we are doing uh, so we have a user id uh, and then we do it status and content done request to delete uh, then we basically pass the response body and check if the status code is 200 or the body dot message uh, to equal uh, is equal to user delete successfully if both of these uh, conditions are met then uh, our uh, test will get pass okay great okay so yeah let's try to run this and you can see uh, this is for uh, failing so this is now uh, treated as one test uh, because uh, there is only one it block so it is test it is getting tested as one so that is okay so it says expected 400 to equal 200 uh, this is happening because uh, this is kind of an arbitrary user id which doesn't exist in our database so it's probably getting like a 400 that uh, you uh, our user have to provide a valid user id so uh, we'll do that we'll change it but uh, let's uh, firstly create write our code here to actually delete our user from the database so to delete our user from database i'm going to use mongoose uh, find uh, by id and remove method so it will work something like this user model dot find by id and remove we'll pass the user id here 
and in drop them if the response is good then we going to do this dot status the status should be 200 and the message will be user deleted successfully and for catch let's just uh, console okay so I think uh, we are good to go here so if the ID is valid user ID so uh, we just put it in find by ID and remove we get the user we remove it and if everything goes fine we just um, return the status 200 and then we also have a JSON here. Uh, this is doing a mistake here. JSON. The message is you deleted successfully. Okay. Okay. So now try it. Uh, let's try out with a valid user ID. So let me create a user. Yeah. Okay. So this is a valid user ID. You can see if I do db dot user find. I got this uh, user ID so now I can put it here and let's see if it, uh, our test works and you can as you can see it gets passed and if I come here and you can see now it doesn't exist so our user is deleted if I try to run it one more time it will not work because that user ID doesn't exist in our database so guys um this is pretty much it uh, to summarize uh, what we did today is this so we written uh, three test cases and according to that we created a delete user API which is working perfectly fine uh, one thing I really love about test cases is that I don't have to use postman or another API tester to test my APIs I can use my test cases to test my API and that works really fine so I'm going to put this code on github so you can now uh, follow along the video tutorial and yeah guys uh, this is it for today i hope uh, you really liked this video and if you have any kind of questions or any kind of doubt you can always reach out to me and uh, yeah don't uh, forget to share this video like this video and uh, subscribe to our recraft channel uh, we are creating a lot of content related to software development and i hope uh, you really love what we are creating so yeah and i see you on the flip side